Hello everyone, we come to you from this beautiful nature park here in Port Mosby and it is good to be back with another year of a million different journeys, a program promoting tourism in Papua New Guinea. Encouraging visitors is our business, will always be our business, but we are not quite sure whether we will get the desired results this year with the outbreak of the coronavirus that virtually has the world scared. Papua New Guinea is no exception. It's put the brakes on tourism. Before we talk to the Chief Executive Officer of the Papua New Guinea Tourism Promotion Authority, Jerry Agus, here is a quick background on the coronavirus. It is believed to be transmitted between animals and people and was first detected in Wuhan province in China. Since then, and in a relatively short time, the virus has spread to just about every continent on Earth. Hit hard are China itself, as well as countries in Asia and the Western Pacific, as well as Europe and the Middle East. Statistics on cases and casualties increase by the day. The global figures, as released by the World Health Organization, are now more than 3,000 dead and over 88,000 cases. Leading world economies have come under threat, affected stock markets and cancellation of international conferences. Doing business between countries has never been more risky. Symptoms of the coronavirus may start with a common cold and lead to shortness of breath, pneumonia, respiratory syndromes, to kidney failures and even death. Research search for a cure is ongoing. There are no cases reported in Papua New Guinea, but that is not to say we are insulated. Precautions are being taken, however extreme some may appear to be, from banning entry of foreign vessels in eastern Britain to trade between the Torres Strait and the western province. Wearing masks and employing heat scanners at ports is now a common trend. Being on guard is Papua New Guinea's best defense as the country lacks capacity to counter an attack by the virus. What we can't escape from, however, are the implications affecting the economy. Hit hard and upfront is the Papua New Guinea tourism industry. Thank you for your time, Mr. August. Millen Bay is also turning back ships. Millen Bay and Eastern Britain are two hubs in tourism. We are in trouble, aren't we? Uh, definitely, we are not immune to what is happening, and uh, that has really affected the tourism industry. Uh, in Papua New Guinea, uh, as you know, Eastern Britain and Millen Bay is our, our tourism hub, and as a result of that uh, coronavirus, you must have heard that uh, one of the cruise ships that was going to uh, Eastern Britain was, was turned back and uh, it's likely that uh, we will no longer be expecting uh, cruise ships anymore for the next uh, couple of weeks and months if this situation uh, doesn't improve. Yeah. There are ordinary people in Papua New Guinea who are developing tourism products suddenly they won't see any tourists coming in, that'll impact them in a, in a big way. Yes, definitely this will affect our SMEs in some of those uh, remote uh, isolated islands, in, especially in, in Millen Bay and uh, even our friends out in uh, East New Britain, because when we get, especially the cruise ships, they tend to buy a lot of artifacts and handicraft and then, you know, they go out to uh, visit sites of attraction and all that, they pay something uh, to, to our people and the community there. So it makes a big difference in their lives. So if cruise ships are no longer coming, definitely it will affect uh, our SMEs in the tourism sector because last year, 2019, our total arrivals was around 210,000. That was the record in terms of uh, arrivals, international arrivals to Papua New Guinea. Of that, 
Around 50,000 were cruise ship visitors, and almost 95% of them go to either Milan Bay or sometimes some of those tourists go to Alatau and then they go to Rabaul. So just imagine the amount of income that is generated through these cruise ships in some of those small highlands in terms of the performance, the cultural shows, uh, the tourism attraction sites that they visit. So it will definitely have an uh, effect on the everyday life because now it appears that these cruise ships will be no longer coming as long as this uh, coronavirus issue is, is around. If the government were to do anything, policy, anything, to counter the virus, it would look at you as one of the key government agents for advice and guidance because uh, you deal with tourism, you deal with people coming in. Yes, uh, tourism is, I mean, Tourism Promotion Authority and the, and the Minister of Tourism is also part of the, the government working committee on this uh, coronavirus issue. And also TPA is part of the working committee that is working on the coronavirus issue as well. So our message out to our technical working group team and the, and the government is the most important thing is the lives of our people and, and the community. That's number one. Uh, there is nothing that we can do to, to compromise that. But the most important thing that we are also uh, highlighting to our government agencies and all the stakeholders is we just need to get one uniform message across to all the stakeholders that are affected, whether it be our tourists, our travel agents, all sailors, airlines, cruise ship owners, all our stakeholders. We need to let them know that because of this coronavirus issue, these are the current restrictions or policies that we have in place to, to counteract what is going on. So that's that's our, our concern. You know, as long as we are alive, we can promote tourism, we can do everything and anything. But the number one priority is the lives of our people must be protected and uh, there, there is nothing that we will promote to or propose to uh, try and compromise the safety and well-being of our people. Jerry Argos, the head of the Papua New Guinea Tourism Promotion Authority. We will continue to report on the outbreak of this virus and the countermeasures taken by the government, as well as the challenges faced by the country's Tourism Promotion Authority. After the break, the story of a man whose life has been full of challenges. Thank you for staying with us. Something a little different, a little refreshing than the coronavirus. He's 80 years old, but still very active in trying to bring tourists into Papua New Guinea. Bob Bates of Trans New Guinea Tours has been doing that for the last 56 years. An aviator, a pioneer, an engineer, an entrepreneur. These have been loud challenges in his life, but all of them point to one passion, one aim, one objective, and that has been tourism. Bob Bates, welcoming the founding Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, the Grand Chief Sir Michael Samare, at his Rondon Ridge Lodge 2019. Two old hands, in their own distinctive ways, played pivotal roles in the development of Papua New Guinea. For Sir Michael, it's been a very loud public life in politics. Bob Bates, however, has been an enigmatic entrepreneur, adventurer, aviator, pioneer. Yet his contributions are also profound. It's been a lifetime that spans over half a century for Bob, who comes from Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. At age 25 and armed with a degree in civil engineering from the University of New South Wales, 
Bob came to the then territory of Papua and New Guinea in 1964 and worked with the Department of Public Works. For young Bob, it was part work, part adventure. In the end, he forgot to return to Australia. Bob is now 80 years old, but age just appears to be a passing of time as he continues the pace he started 56 years ago. Yeah, like with the old guys. <laughs> Bob considers Papua New Guinea his home and over those years made significant development contributions in remote areas employing hundreds of people. Soon after arriving in Port Mosby, Bob was sent to the Highlands to build roads and bridges. He worked his way to become the regional engineer. Some of his construction footprints are still evident today from Goroka in the Eastern Highlands to Tari to the Southwest, now the new Hela province. After seven years with Public Works, Bob relinquished government employment to set up his own engineering construction company and continued to build roads and bridges, airstrips in the highlands as well as the western province. Construction and tourism really don't go hand in hand, but engineers know something about measurements. So Bob made a calculated shift to tourism in 1975. He consolidated that to what it is today, Trans New Guinea Tours. Trans New Guinea Tours started in the mid 70s as an operator four-wheel drive trips that uh, used to go to the Southern Highlands. It was, uh, it would go generally out via Wabag and Ligam to Cundip, then across the Cundip Lakes and to Margarima and then into the Tari Valley and we even went out as far as Lake Copiago would you believe. Incorporated as a company in 1977, Bob used his engineering knowledge to build some extremely exotic wilderness lodges in at least four provinces in Papua New Guinea. Trans New Guinea Tours then had to employ extremely diversified operation methods, moving tourists between lodges by either sea, air or land. Trans New Guinea Tours owns and operates seven lodges in Papua New Guinea. They are Rondon Ridge in the Western Highlands, Ambua Lodge in the Hela Province, Benchbeck Wildlife Lodge and Lake Murray Lodge in the Western Province, Karawari Lodge and the MV Civic Spirit in the East Civic Province, and the Malolo Plantation Lodge in the Madang Province. These lodges are the signature tourist facilities from which Papua New Guinea's unique flora and fauna, sights, sceneries and cultures offer tourists a window into a million different journeys. When you think about it, well, how do you get private money into Papua New Guinea? And I thought, well, let's give tourism a try. I thought, you know, we were running trucks with a civil engineering contracting business. We could probably run some buses. So we bought some buses and then we had people in buses and it started to expand. So we then 
want to put, went inside to build lodges so people would go into our accommodation facilities rather than us outlaying the money to go into other people's accommodation facilities. And I guess that's how it grew from there. At the same time, Bob Bates ensures that Trans New Guinea Tours is culturally sensitive and ecologically responsible in all its operations to preserve the unique and authentic cultures of the country and at the same time maintain nature's ecological balance. A case in point is the construction of many hydro plants. Bob has taken on this environmentally friendly source of electricity for nearly all of his lodges where the mains are absent. In doing so, electricity is also made available to villagers free of charge. Further maximizing his engineering knowledge, he has also built airstrips near some of the lodges to ensure easy access. He engaged hundreds of people to clear bushes and build runways, a source of income for the people where there was none before. These airstrips are operational today and maintained by Bob himself. As an inbound tour operator, Bob Bates was one of a few private organizations to recognize the tourism potential in Papua New Guinea long before the government took any notice. Over the years, he developed tourism products and became an effective marketing agent promoting Papua New Guinea as a destination in Europe, Asia, the Americas, Russia, and the Middle East. Tens of thousands have visited Papua New Guinea over the years as a direct result of Bob's loan efforts. Among some of the most notable names to grace our shores has been the famous Rolling Stones lead singer, Sir Mick Jagger. He flew into Mount Hagen in his private jet in 2014 and spent four days at Bob's Rondon Ridge Lodge. Another famous name to come to Papua New Guinea under Trans New Guinea tours has been Sean Lennon, the son of Beatles star John Lennon. Bob showed the young Lennon parts of the country, flying him to the New Guinea Islands and some of the provinces along the coast. Immediately after Papua New Guinea's independence in 1975, Bob Bates had quietly but surely made inroads at world trade travel shows. ITB Berlin is the largest, where Bob has been the lone voice and face for almost 40 uninterrupted years selling Papua New Guinea to tourists. ITB Berlin is the world's premier trade fair attended by hotels, airlines, tourism boards, tour operators, system providers, car rentals, etc., etc. A presence at this world travel trade show is a must for any country serious about developing tourism. The only other PNG company that has come close to Bob in consistency at the ITB Berlin has been Air New Guinea. The Papua New Guinea Tourism Promotion Authority has made a presence there in recent years. This year's ITB Berlin, which should have taken place this week, this month, has apparently been cancelled due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. It is the first cancellation since its inception in the early 1960s. Indeed, many other international conferences of equal significance and magnitude have had to face the same fate. Bob Bates' story, however, continues after the break.
as enterprising as he is, Bob Bates is also something of an adventurer and an avid aviator. He climbed just about all of Papua New Guinea's mountain peaks during his lifetime. Some of them, he climbed Mount Albert Edwards, he climbed Mount Otto, Mount Wilhelm several times, and a few others. Bob Bates learned how to fly in 1973 and bought his own single engine plane soon after. What followed was a world of aviation adventure. Bob flew around Papua New Guinea and conducted annual air safaris with other aviators for several years. In doing so, he unwittingly promoted aviation tourism in PNG. In between, he flew around the Pacific Island countries as well as return flights to ports in Asia, Australia. Further afield, Bob hired planes in Africa and flew between many countries there as well as the United States and South America. In 1994, Bob took a round-the-world trip with his son, a journey that culminated with an expedition to the Antarctic. Bob also climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest peak in Tanzania. Twelve years earlier, Bob visited Tibet. This picture was taken in 1982, some 16,000 feet above sea level. Here, Bob is accompanied by a famous mountaineer, Tinsang Noge who, together with Sir Edmund Hillary of New Zealand, became the first people to reach the world's highest peak, Mount Everest, in the Himalayas in 1953. He is also one of a few Westerners to have visited the tightly guarded North Korea. Today, Bob Bates is engaged in a major road construction near Mount Hagen in the Western Highlands province. Using his own money and engineering expertise, he is building a completely new 15-kilometer road from London Ridge to Mount Hagen City providing access for the first time for many communities along the way. This road is 15 to 20 meters wide, cutting through mountains and V-shaped valleys, with three bailey bridges across rivers. Once completed, the new road, road forming a ring road south of the provincial capital. People have allowed the road to go through their land without compensation demands for property lost or damaged. This is a rare case in Papua New Guinea where demands are always inevitable. As much as the road is needed by the people themselves, this unique case of cooperation between villagers and a private person or company is an eye-opener. Given uh, employment to Papua New Guineans, uh, promote the country to tourism, uh, unique market you have promoted. And uh, this 50 years of uh, staying in our beautiful country, in your country, will not be forgotten by us, but we still have a long journey to go. And it's all about the state of mind. You know, if you think you're old, then it's the mind that makes you old, you know. So if the mind keeps on thinking young, well, you can do impossible things. This is also a testimony of the respect the people of the Western Highlands have for Bob's contributions towards the development of their communities. This road construction, incidentally, is not a tax credit arrangement between Bob and the state of Papua New Guinea. Bob says it is a contribution to the local communities and the people have responded by cooperating. 
the Western Highland Provincial Government has assisted by sourcing four excavators which have been bought under the DSIP and PSIP funds. There are many people in all walks of life who've made significant contributions to the development of Papua New Guinea and its people. Bob Bates ranks amongst the top in devoting his life to building a business in the country and in doing so created employment and opportunities for thousands of Papua New Guineans. It's been a, a great country to live in and to work in, uh, particularly in the highlands. In the highlands have got a wonderful climate and the people are friendly and they're, they're good workers. Bob's tourism business has brought in millions of kina in foreign exchange. As a tour operator, he has single-handedly marketed the country's tourism potential consistently at international travel trade shows. Bob may have unwittingly set the stage for the renewed push now by Papua New Guinea to develop tourism as a major industry. Papua New Guinea has also benefited immensely from Bob Bates' engineering and aviation skills in the construction of roads and airstrips. Go again, bless him, you want them to eat, no? <laughs> you look proper and good. You remember, Bob, I'm a good driver. The car plane and driving me going behind me like Billy Mouse, playing me in the university, the kind of Billy Mouse. Car plane, car and Busan, you're going to pour him long house plane. This is house me driving. I'm driving and building a podium and me building a mouse plane. The young fellow Bob. At 80 now, Bob shows no sign of the years. In fact, the opposite is true when he is up early checking construction projects, the operations of the lodges, or traveling the world, trying to land that elusive tourism kina for Papua New Guinea. That has been Bob Bates, an Australian who's decided to make Papua New Guinea his home. And this has been A Million Different Journeys, the first edition for 2020. Next week, we'll visit Tawali Resort in the Millen Bay province and a report on the second security congress held here in Port Mosby. The theme, the next generation in supporting security and technology. See you then. Bye for now.